Well, good morning. Glad to see each and every one of you here. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to ask Leo to lead us off with a word of prayer this morning, and then we're going to get started with worship. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Let's start with a word of prayer. To the King of Kings be all the glory, the praise and worship, for he is worthy, worthy to receive. Father God, we're so we're so happy to be in the house of God, in the house of prayer. We love you so much and thank you so much for the tremendous privilege you give us to us. And I pray, God, today that your word will be spoken. I pray, God, that your word will be transforming. And I pray, God, for courage. I pray that your church will be encouraged. And I pray that your church, church will be filled with the Holy Spirit. We love you, God, and thank you so much for the things that are yet to come. And we love you and give all the praise and worship to you. We pray this morning and let us this praise and worship be, be very sweet and, and sweet sound to you in your ears. We thank you again for the privilege. Let your word be spoken and I pray for a special anointing to our pastor today. For the word of God be preached and be transforming. And I pray God that every, every person in this room and every, every person watching online, I pray God that they will feel your presence in a very special and a very anointed way that I never feel be felt before. Thank you again, God, for the tremendous opportunity. We love you and give all the glory back to you, for there's no one like you. We give all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, things are a little bit different today. Tim and Julie are not with us. If you uh, are on Facebook or on social media, maybe you heard... Uh, Tim and Julie had a new granddaughter uh, born this week, and uh, that's a praise, but also we need to pray because she was, I think, six weeks early. So she is in NICU, uh, and we need to be praying for her, and uh, we also need to be praying for Tim and Julie's uh, daughter, Chloe. Um, she is uh, right there in the hospital. Everything's going well. Uh, but we just need to be in prayer for them as they continue. So they're not here today, of course, so you're stuck with me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so things are going to be a little bit different, but are you ready to praise the Lord? Have you got something to praise the Lord for? Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet, and we will uh, sing this morning. I think we're going to sing a couple of hymns that you're going you're gonna to know and a couple of praise hymns that you're going to know. So let's go ahead and get started with I'll Fly Away. tough spot today because I'm having to do a couple of things at one time. I'm having to play, sing, and watch this, and watch who's not singing. So y'all help me out a little bit today, okay? So what I, don't make me have to look up, okay? Hey, it, it is a great day uh, to be here. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. 
And, uh, you know, Easter is coming up in two weeks. Next week is Palm Sunday. And I, I know that it's just a great time to be worshiping uh, the Lord. And I look around and I see so many smiles on your faces. And I know that you're just blessed by God. You're just blessed by God. And that, that is so good to see. We're going to sing Victory in Jesus. Does anybody know Victory in Jesus? A couple of you. If not, you'll know it by the end of it. <laughs> in Jesus. We're going to sing this next one. It is Come Now is the Time to Worship. Oh, 
pretty good. I hear them. I actually hear them singing this morning. That's good. Y'all are doing a great job. I'm not going to tell Tim y'all are doing such a wonderful job, though. Um, I tell you, it's you know when you think about all the things that are happening in the world today, isn't it good to have a place where you can just come and worship and just let everything that's happening in the world just fade away? And so in, right here in this room, for these next few more minutes that we have, let's just really give it over to God. Let's just give Him our burdens. Let's give Him all, all, all the praise that is offered to Him. Let's just give Him everything today because He deserves it, doesn't He? He deserves all the praise, all the glory for everything that He has done. This next song that we're going to be singing is Shout to the Lord. Now, I know we're Baptist, but it's okay to shout, right? It's okay to shout, and that's what we're going to sing about. Shout to the Lord, all the earth let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. You know, we're going to be celebrating Easter here in two weeks. And I, I tell you, that, that is one of my favorite Sundays of the year. All right, and I, I pray that you're prepared, that you're already inviting your friends and your family to come join you for worship. And um, it, it's just going to be a good time being on Easter. Let's sing. today. Amen. You may be seated. Good job.
Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. He didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you Go ahead and dismiss our children this morning. Uh, we got Crystal and Miss Suzanne back there in the back. Uh, they have volunteered this morning. We're so thankful for our volunteers. All right. Is two of you going to be enough or we need some extra help? We're good. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you. And we do have, if you got the newsletter this past week, we do have the sign up for Children's Church. Uh, no one signed up, so please sign up before I sign you up, okay? <laughs> the, the last thing you want is um, um, me having to go down there and keep Children's Church on Sunday morning because um, Frank would have to come up and preach. So <laughs> so good, good to see you this morning. Uh, a couple of announcements just very quickly before we get into uh, the text this morning. Uh, number one, this Saturday is our food distribution so if you want to be part of that great ministry just be here at nine o'clock saturday morning and the weather's turning out to be good so uh, i hope that uh, you'll join us on that day and i know that some of you have been coming and you're like i just don't have anything to do i don't know where to serve we we have so many people from outside of our church that are volunteering and helping which is a great thing but don't ever feel like you don't have a place to serve we'll, we will find something for you to do um, uh, but we, I want you to be here if, if nothing else to support what we're doing so just your smiling face it, it gives people hope as they drive through so that's next Saturday the following Saturday uh, we are having um, I'm sorry the following Sunday is um, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And of course that starts uh, Holy Week, it starts Passion Week, and we're gonna be observing the Lord's Supper during uh, the morning worship. So be here next Sunday. And then the following Saturday is when we're having our Easter celebration, egg hunt and games for the kids all ages, and we're gonna have a good time. So make sure you're here for that as well. It's gonna be a good time. We need some volunteers to help set up, cook hamburgers and hot dogs. Okay, good. All I got to do is just stare at them. You know, if I just stare at you long enough, you'll just, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> but uh, anyways, so we'd love to have your help on that, and uh, it's going to be a good, good turnout. We're going to advertise our church, you know, to our neighborhoods and let them know that they have a place where they can come and worship. So anyways, Carl, can you do me a favor? Can you cut these middle lights on? Th this group right here in the middle is trying to hide from me, and I really need to see them. For some reason, I just can't. Oh, now everybody's hiding from me. <laughs> I think it's the, yeah, there you go. Now I can see you. Awesome. I didn't know if there was anybody sitting in the middle or not. <laughs> awesome. Good looking crowd today. So good to see each and every one of you here. Um, let's get into the word today. I know um, I am preaching on a, a series of sermons of I Choose. And we started uh, the first Sunday two weeks ago that I choose to praise. And, and that's a good way to live our life, to choose to praise. No matter what happens in our life, we are going to praise uh, the Lord. And then last week, um, what did I preach on last week? What? Oh, forgiveness. Um, yeah. 
we had a lot go on this this week, and I, I'm, I'm trying to be more careful about the sermons that I preach because I'm noticing some things that are happening. And uh, anyways, but we are we are we are choosing to forgive, uh, even though it's a commandment. It's still a choice that we have in in our life. Do we choose to forgive or not? And um, you know, I like to have fun. I, I really do. I, I like to have fun. Uh, I, I like to be in places where you can have fun and you can enjoy each other. And I tell you, when, when I preach about forgiveness like that and uh, some some other things that are happening in the world and happening uh, with, with other people, we sometimes we just can just laugh about it. We can just laugh about it. That, hey, you know what? The Lord's going to take care of everything. Today, I want to continue in this thought, I choose to be faithful. I choose to be faithful. Now, I'm going to be taking um, a passage of Scripture out of Revelation chapter 2. Okay, and that's, that's going to be our main focus, but then we're going to go to Joshua, and then we're going to come right back to Revelation, okay? I hope that you uh, continue with this journey this morning, because that's what it is. It's going to be a journey, but you're going to see exactly what the Lord has in store for us as, as we go through this. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask the, the Spirit of God to help us understand the Word this morning, because, you know, anytime we open up the book of Revelation, uh, it automatically, some people start thinking, oh boy, I'm not going to be able to understand it. Trust me, you're going to be able to understand it this morning. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to make you uh, really understand what God wants us to say, because God does not want us to be in the dark. God does not want us to be wondering. He wants us to know exactly what He has to say. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful that we can gather right here at this place at this time and we can worship you. Lord, we can praise you. And Lord, you have done so much for us. And in return, Lord, we just want to just give you glory and honor that you deserve. You are our king. You're our Lord. You're our master. You are all that we need. And so, Father, today we just give you ourselves. So, Father, as we read uh, the Word today, the Bible, I just pray, God, that you speak to our hearts. Let us know exactly what you have to say to us. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. While the girls were singing, um, I, I had this thought of, of, of this passage of Scripture. It, it's not on the screen, but I just want to read it, but just, just really get it off my mind. Have you ever had one of those things? It's not going to get off your mind until you say it, right? It's just going to bug you until you just get it off your mind. But this is from Deuteronomy chapter 7, uh, starting in verse 9. Okay, it says, Therefore, know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. Isn't that good news? that God is faithful. We can trust Him. We can rely on Him. God will never let us down. And that is so good to know that even though somebody else may let us down, even though we may let somebody down, God is the one that we can trust. God will never let us down. So I want to talk to you this morning on the subject, I choose to be faithful. Let's read now in Revelation chapter 2, starting in verse 8. If, if you're familiar with the book of Revelation, starting in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, there are seven churches that are mentioned. These churches were actual churches in Asia. Uh, they were off the island of Patmos, uh, and John is uh, he, he's imprisoned on the island of Patmos, and he has this vision, the revelation from the Lord, and he is told, he's instructed by Jesus to write these things down. And so he writes seven letters, and then he is to go deliver these letters to the church, okay? So it would be like somebody coming and knocking on the church door one day and saying, I've got a letter from the Lord. I've got a letter that you need to read, and then I stand up here uh, as your pastor, and I read this letter, okay? Now, every one of these letters, or seven letters, every one of these uh, have the same type of uh, composure to it, okay? Uh, there's, uh, I know what you're doing, but if, if you don't do this, then this is going to happen. And, and so the, the church that I want to focus on today is called the church at Smyrna. It's the second 
church that, that is listed. And these churches, if, if you look on your map, maybe you have a map in your Bible, you can follow a circle coming off the island of Patmos, and, and, and you can just make a circle around uh, to all these churches. Now, as, as people read the book of Revelation, you know, sometimes uh, people don't want to take it word for word. They don't, they don't want to take it literally, uh, but they want to kind of uh, think about it and say maybe it's implying to some other things. And we have to be real careful with that sometimes, but um, let's just go ahead and read verse 8. It says, And to the angel of the church in Smyrna. Now, I put in brackets right there the persecuted church because maybe if you're looking at your Bible, you'll see the subtitle about this church is it was the persecuted church church. Now, um, this writing is taking place around um, probably 60 to 80 AD, okay? Jesus uh, came uh, to the earth, and, and he died on the cross, and then about 60 years later, we see these words, or these words were given to John, okay? John is very old in age, probably around 80 years old, and now he's writing these things, and he says to the angel of the church. Now, when we think about angels, we, we talk about uh, spiritual beings, don't we? We talk about wings and flapping, but actually an angel is a messenger. And so the way that you can interpret this is the angel of the church is actually the pastor of the church, the messenger who is giving the word of God. And so this letter was actually written to the church, but it was delivered to the pastor of the church. Now, many of you might not know this, but the pastor of this church at Smyrna at this time was Polycarp. And well, I'll say more about him in just a minute, but that was the pastor of that church. They were a persecuted church. And he says, right, these things says the first and the last. Now, I, I know the words on our screen is not written in red, but this is Jesus speaking. Uh, the, the, these things says the first and the last. That is Jesus. He's the Alpha and the Omega who was dead and has came to life. Aren't you glad Jesus is alive today? He's not dead. He's not in the grave. Uh, he, he come out of that grave and he is in heaven right now. And John chapter 14 tells us he is preparing a place for you and I. Now in verse 9, Jesus says, I know. Now you could stop right there because doesn't Jesus know everything? He knows all. And so you, you can take and circle that word right there, I know, uh, because Jesus knows. He knows exactly what these people were facing. He knows what we're facing. And this message still applies to us today, to the church. I know your works. I know your tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Now, that, does, that doesn't seem like positive news, does it? I mean, here, the pastor's delivered this letter, and it says, do not fear the things that are about to come. You're going to suffer, right? And people say, what week is that? Because I'm not going to come. I'm just going to miss out on church. Indeed, the devil who... Who, the devil, notice that, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. And of course, every letter ends with this. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. When we think about being faithful, and that subject of being faithful, and I read to you in Deuteronomy chapter 7, that God is faithful. That is an attribute of God, of just who He is. He is faithful to us. And in return, we ought to, as Christians, have that same attribute, that same character, that we too are going to be faithful, right? We're going to be faithful in our marriage. We're going to be faithful to our spouse. We're going to be faithful to our husband. We're going to be faithful to our wife. Now, um, here next month, my wife and I are going to be celebrating 22 years. I'm sorry, 24 years. <laughs> I saw a hand go up like this. I was like, 
As soon as I started saying that, I was like, 20, I started counting. 24 years of marriage. She has been faithful to me, I hope, for 24 years. 24 years. And what a blessing that is. And, and I know some of you um, have been married um, 60 so many years. Um, Mr. Wardell, how many years? 69 years. That, that needs applause, absolutely. 69 years of faithful marriage. I know Bob and Gil, y'all are 65 years. 65 years, amen. Is anybody else close to that in, in the 60s? I mean, I'm only, how many, Paul, Jeannie, how many? 60, 60 years. Wow, wow. Anybody else? Uh, Ken and Carol, how, how, almost 63 years. Good night. That is awesome. That, that's, uh, that's really unheard of nowadays. What a testimony that is to be faithful to one another for that many. I'm only 46 years old. They have been some of almost double my age, right? And it's like, wow, to be that faithful to one another. What's so funny? <laughs> So when we think about being faithful, we, we are to be faithful in our marriages. We are to be faithful to our families. We are to be faithful to our jobs, our, our workers, our, 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 our employers. We are to be faithful people to our church. We are to be faithful to our friends. What does that mean to be faithful? And I think the best definition that we can get is, are we committed? I think if you narrow it down, are you committed? Are you committed in your marriage? Are you committed to your church? Are you committed to your family? Are you committed to your job? Are you committed to your friends? Are you committed to yourself? And most of all, are you committed to God? Because He's committed to you. I mean, when we think about what God has done, He has shown us the perfect example. Now, this is what I want to do. Now, I want to go to Joshua chapter 24, because Joshua is at the end of his life. You remember, Joshua was the, the next leader after Moses died, and Joshua uh, has proven himself to be a leader. And God told him, be strong, be of courage, uh, don't let the words uh, leave your your mind, don't, don't let the law of God leave you. And in Joshua chapter 24, he's giving this farewell speech. He's, he's trying to let the people who he has led for so many years, he's trying to give them one last uh, hoorah, just to just stay committed to God. And, and he says these words, and I think you'll see that you, th these are kind of familiar to you. In, in verse 14 of Joshua 24, Joshua says, Now therefore, fear the Lord. Now that doesn't mean to be scared of God. That means you are committed to God. You are in awe of God. You are surrendered to God. And watch this. Serve Him with sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. These are his last words. Serve the Lord. Fear the Lord. Put away all those other gods because all those other gods are going to let you down. But there's one true faithful God and it's God above, God Almighty. He will never let you down. Serve him. Watch this. Verse 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. This is where I got this whole series of sermons from. Right here, we make choices of what we're going to do in our relationship and fellowship with God. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which are your father served uh, that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, say it with me, we will serve the Lord. Now that is the final words that Joshua is trying to give to the nation of Israel. He's trying to tell them, 
serve the Lord. Put away all those gods. But if it seems evil to you to worship the Lord, then go 100%. Be committed to a false god then. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't be just sitting on the fence, not knowing what you're going to do. Choose this day who you're going to serve. Be fully committed in your relationships. Be fully committed to your job. Be fully committed in everything that you do. Be confident in what you do. And that means a lot. But Joshua says, but as for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. I don't know if you recognize this, and I'm going to go back and show it to you. In the first part of verse 14, he says, Now therefore, fear the Lord, serve Him in sincerity and in truth. Now, when we think about those words, now really we're always focused about we will serve the Lord, right? And that's where our focus goes to. But when I kept reading this over and over and over again, I really... Uh, pondered on these words, sincerity and in truth. And then I went to the NIV version. How many of you have the NIV version? You might see this word right here. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Sincerity and truth with all faithfulness. Be 100% committed. That's what it means to be faithful. That's what it means to live out faithfulness to the Lord to your spouse, in your marriage, to your church, no matter what you do, be faithful. Be faithful. Now, we know that God had something against the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel turned their back against God. They began serving other gods. They began serving other people. Joshua gave them the warning. He said, make your choice now. Don't be serving all these false gods. And of course, you keep reading through the Old Testament. They were taken into Babylonian captivity for 70 years, right? And then they were allowed to come back. God is merciful. God is graceful. He brings them back, gives them another chance. But aren't you glad for God's grace today? Because God does not turn his back on us. And in return, we should never turn our back on him. So fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Now, got a question for you. How do I remain faithful when my faith is challenged? Did you know that your faith is challenged every day? Did you know, and, and, and we read a while ago, we're going to come back to see it, that the devil wants to challenge your faith. You remember, oh, Job, right? Oh, Job, well, he suffered a lot for his faith. Remember, the, 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 the Satan came uh, to God one day and says, Have you considered your servant Job? And God says, You know what? I do know my servant Job. You can do whatever you want to to him, but don't touch him. And all this calamity happened to him. But Job never failed in his faith. Now that's strong. That is a strong message for us. But how do we remain so faithful... How do we remain so faithful to our church? How do we remain so faithful in our marriage and in our jobs? How do we stay so faithful when our faith is challenged, and especially challenged, by the devil? Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you these points, get them out of the way, and then we're going to come back and talk about them. Number one, this is how we do this. We must remember God's faithfulness to us. We must remember God's faithfulness to us. He will never let us down. So that gives us the ability to be able to trust Him and be able to have the faith in knowing that He's there for us and knowing that we can live out our faith and we can be faithful in every one of our relationships. Number two, we must remember our reward. Let's go back now and look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. To the angel, the messenger, the passenger of the church in Smyrna, These things says the first and the last. This is Jesus speaking to the church. I have a message for the church. I know, he says, I know your works. I know your tribulation. Watch how this plays out. This is very, very interesting, though, how you can look at this verse. I know you're good, and I know you're bad. I know your good works, and I also know the things that are happening circumstantially in your life that are not of your favor, the tribulations, the sufferings that are coming your way. I know you're trying to work. I know you're trying to do something good for me, but it just seems like everything bad happens. 
Anybody been in that, in that in situation before? God, it seems like I'm living my life for you, but every time I turn around, something else is happening. I don't understand. Jesus says, I know. I know what's happening in your life. I know how you're being treated. I know these things. I know that you're trying to do a good work. I know that you're facing opposition and you have tribulation. I know that you are living in poverty, but Initially, you're rich because who do you belong to? You belong to the richest person in not just the world, but the universe of all the heavens, right? We belong to God. God, he owns everything. And, and even though that you may think that you're living in poverty, even though you think that you're poor, you as a child of God are one of the richest people on the face of the earth because one day you're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Is a child of God, everything that is given to Jesus is handed over to us. Isn't that good news? When we take a look at the world right now, and we're thinking, man, poor me. I look around, I see somebody else doing so much better than me. I see somebody else treated better than me. I see all this, poor me. How many of you ever have pity parties? Okay, not just me. Okay, at least once a week, I try to have a pity party. Just keep it on schedule, right? Just because it's going to happen. Let's just keep a schedule of it. <laughs> But sometimes we take a look outside of our life and we say, man, it must be nice to be them. It must be nice to be that person. But you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on in their mind. You don't know what's going on in their heart. And so when we start thinking, don't look at other people and judge yourself according to others. Look at God and judge yourself before God. You're a child of of the king your royalty how many of you act like your royalty every day very few of us very few of us we don't walk around thinking we're royalty but if you do that's a good way to look at life because I promise you you'll enjoy a life a lot better when you have the perspective that you have everything it, that God's gonna provide everything for you that God's gonna take care of you and God's gonna make sure everything happens according to his will Isn't that a good way to live it's good. So we need to choose to be faithful. We need to be choosing to be faithful to God, that we're going to live out our faith. We're going to live to be who we're called to be, to be Christians, to be followers of Christ, and we're going to do it wholeheartedly, right? We're going to do it 100% committed to Jesus Christ. Now, when we talk about this, he says, I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews but are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. That word synagogue does not mean building. It actually means a gathering, a gathering of people. Now, at this certain time, there were believing Jews, those who believed in Jesus as the Messiah, and those who did not believe. And some of them were blaspheming, saying that they did believe when they truly didn't. They were acting like Christians. Y'all know anybody that acts like Christians but might not be a Christian yeah uh, so so there are some people that they Jesus called them hypocrites you're putting on a mask you're, you're putting on a, a persona that you think that you are but you're not okay and so it, it that that hypocrite uh, language that term is really in the uh, acting stages like you're, you're trying to present yourself to be somebody that you're truly not okay so there were some of the Jews who were trying to say they were followers of Jesus but they were not but they're of the gathering that's what the word synagogue means a gathering the gathering of Satan okay now verse 10 he says do not fear any of those things which are about that you are about to suffer now, this is why the church at Smyrna is called or labeled as the persecuted church. Now, up till about uh, 80 AD, uh, everything was just fine. But starting in 81 AD, the emperor decided that he was to be called God. Okay? That, that would be like our president saying every U.S. citizen must once or twice a day say he is Lord he is God okay now if you don't do that there's gonna be repercussion for that okay either we're gonna put you in prison or we're gonna take things away from you 
Okay? Now, that's the severity of the persecution that this church was facing. Aren't you glad that we're not facing that type of persecution yet? It may be coming. It, it's just not yet of this uh, style. So here they were being the persecuted church. Now, there are so many people that said, you know, I want to live out my faith. I want to say that I'm a Christian. I want to be a Christian. And I want to be 100% committed. But if I'm going to be beaten and put in prison, I, I may not want to just publicly tell people that I'm a Christian. Okay? And, and that's where, forgive me for saying this, but that's a weak Christian. Weak in faith. And I don't know about you, I don't want to be weak. Do you want to be labeled as a weak Christian? Or do you want to be labeled as a strong, bold person of Jesus Christ? That no matter what somebody says, hey, you cannot worship God. And you say, watch me, right? Watch me. I will serve. Didn't Daniel have to go through those types of sufferings, right? Uh, he was to bow down and worship. And he's like, no, sorry. There's only one God we're going to worship. And that's the true God, right? And things worked out in his favor, by the way. He didn't cower down. Okay, so when we look at this church, they knew by the letter that was sent to them that there was coming a suffering. Watch this. Indeed, the devil, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. In other words, there's going to be a spiritual evil attack against your faith. Your faith is going to be challenged and you're going to have to make a choice. Are you going to stand with Christ or are you going to stand with the world? And that's a choice that these people had to make. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And you will have tribulation 10 days. Now, some scholars say that 10 days means 10 years. It means different things. We don't really fully 100% know. But this is what I do know, uh, is there are some historians that have written about this time, and I told you the pastor of the church was Polycarp. And Polycarp, um, he suffered for 10 days, okay? He suffered, he was, because he was preaching about Jesus, the pastor of the church, isn't that what a pastor is supposed to do? But see, the government come in and says, you're not to preach about Jesus being the Lord, don't say those words. And so he kept preaching about Jesus. And one day the, the government come in and they said, we're going to burn you at the stake. And so for 10 days he was beaten. And finally they put him in a place where he was going to burn at the stake. And some of the historians say that they, they, made him, they caught him on fire three times and he would not burn. Uh, and yes, that, 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 is, that is living out your faith, right? That, that, is, that is saying, God is going to be here for me. But for three times, they tried to burn him at the stake, and, and he could not. And finally, somebody come across with a spear and stabbed him in the heart, and that's what killed him. It wasn't the burning at the stake. It was somebody stabbing him with a, a spear. But this is what Jesus says, be faithful unto death. And I wonder, is that our motive today? That no matter what happens in our life, we will be faithful to death. We will be faithful to God to death. We will be faithful to our, in our marriage until death, in, in our vows that we say, until death do us part. I mean, we need to keep those vows, right? We need to understand those are important vows that we make before God, and we need to keep those. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Now, let me back up to verse 8, because the first point that I told you, how do we go through these sufferings when our faith is challenged? How do we remain faithful? Number one, we must remember the faithfulness of God. What did he say in verse 8? These things says the first and the last. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I was here before you were ever born, and I'm going to be here when you're gone. I am in the middle. I am always going to be here for you. I was dead, and now I came to life. I have conquered sin. I have conquered death. And by doing that, you have eternal life. And so when you see that taking place, 
God is faithful to save his children. For those who believe in him shall have eternal life. We must remember God's faithfulness. When our faith is being challenged, when our faith is at the point of what do I do, the decisions that I make, do I be faithful or do I cave in, you must remember God is faithful, he is faithful to you, and in return, we must be faithful. Amen? Just say, I am faithful. I am faithful. I'm going to be faithful till the end, all right? Now, um, when, when we think about the things that are going on in the world today, now, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get all political. I don't, I don't want to talk about that today. I just want you to think about the things that are happening in your life. What are you committed to? Are you 100% committed to God? Are you all in? Or is there some other God that you're serving? Is there some other false religion that you're serving? Or are you all in that I am going to worship God? I am going to serve God 100%. And that's what Joshua's message was. Don't be sitting on the fence trying to make up your mind which way you're going to go by the way that the people go. You make up your mind what you're going to do. And Joshua says, serve the Lord because God is faithful. Okay? Now, when we see the second part, not only is God faithful, but we must remember our reward. Look what the last part of the verse 10 says. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Hey, I, call, I saw a couple of smiles come on some people's face because you've studied about these crowns that you're going to be given. When we die and we get to heaven, we're going to be rewarded. And you see right here that if we remain faithful to God, we receive a crown, all right? And, and this is a fancy crown, by the way, made of gold, probably priceless. We couldn't even afford this crown. And we're going to be given this crown. It's going to be a reward because we endured. We suffered through the tribulations. We suffered through the persecution. But well, I got good news for you. We don't keep those crowns. We lay those crowns at the feet of Jesus because he's the one that deserves it. He is all faithful. Now, um, I, I want to skip to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 because this is what happens sometimes. And Paul, uh, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, starting in verse 11, he starts off by saying, this is a faithful saying. And I left out verse uh, 11 and 12, but he says in verse 13, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. Now, let's go back and really pay attention to these words. If we are faithless, now that's not saying no faith, but our, if we are less in faith, if we're having struggles, he remains faithful faithful. In other words, if we remember his faithfulness, it fills us with faith. And then we don't look at ourselves as being faithless because we're in a right relationship with Jesus Christ. We are serving him. We are meditating on his word. We are praying. We are serving him. We are doing. We are obeying. And God is glorified. And watch this. Our faith begins to increase because he is faithful. So if you get to the point where you're having to make a decision, what do I do? Let me tell you what you do. You turn to the Word of God. You turn to the one who knows you. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're suffering with. He knows what you're thinking. He knows the decision that you're about to make. And if you focus on His faithfulness, I promise you and He promises you, He will fill you with His faith. That is such good news that Paul gives us. Now, I want to go to Luke chapter 22 because this is the, the, the season of Easter. If you remember, on the night before Jesus uh, was to be crucified, he was uh, taken, uh, he was betrayed by Judas. But before this happened, Jesus looks at the disciples, and especially Simon, and he says in verse 31, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you. Now, do you remember a couple of verses that we read in Revelation chapter 2? The devil, right, is going to put some of you in prison. You see, God allows the devil to cause some suffering in our life for a reason. 
He allowed some suffering to take place so that we remain faithful. If our faith is never tested, if our faith is never challenged, we will never grow stronger in our faith. So God allows, God allowed Job to have his faith tested. God allowed Abraham to have his faith tested. God's allowing me to have my faith tested. Stephen, where do you stand in my relationship with you? Are you 100% in? And of course on Sunday, yes sir, I'm full in. Okay, let's see what happens on Monday. Right? Then our faith is tested. Because it is so awesome to come in here on a Sunday morning to be gathered around with smiling faces and everybody's in a good spirit and everybody's worshiping and praising to God. Everything's good. But then when we individually go away and we're on our own and nobody knows what we're going through, our faith sometimes is tested. And our faith must stand and we must be 100% committed to God and to everything that we do. But the Lord Jesus said to Simon, Indeed, Satan has asked for you. In other words, Satan came before God and said, Have you considered your servant Peter, Simon Peter? Have you considered him? And watch this. He's asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Of course, we know how this plays out. Verse 32, But I have prayed for you. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus is our mediator he is praying for us when that's by, that's why he knows what we're going through don't think that you're by yourself in these certain situations that you're in jesus is praying for you where's jesus right now he's at the right hand throne of god praying for you praying for the church praying for his followers that your faith should not fail now this is where peter had a choice, right? And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Now, verse 33, and he said to him, Lord, this is Peter speaking back to Jesus. It's on a Sunday, right? No, well, it was Thursday night, but this is a Sunday morning attitude worship right here. Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. I'll die for you. I will go to prison for you. I am strong in my faith. It is Sunday morning. I'm praising God. It's good. I stand together with the church. I'm a Christian. There's, Satan can't do anything to me. And then it gets dark. The sun goes down. And whispering starts happening, right? He's keeping himself warm by the, the, the burn barrel, right? It's, it's cold, and they got the little fire burning. A little girl comes up. Hey, weren't you with Jesus? Who, who, who's Jesus? I, I, don't know Je I, don't, I don't know who Jesus is. Three times he denies Jesus. And then finally on that third time of denying Jesus, the cock crows, the rooster crows. And then right there, Peter knew, I failed. I failed. I denied Jesus three times. Just as he said, Satan wanted to sift him like wheat. And let me tell you, church, Satan wants to sift you like wheat. Don't think that you're any different. Because once you take a stand... Today, I'm going to stand for Jesus. I'm going to stand strong in my faith. That's when Satan says, let's just see how strong your faith is. And God's going to say, test them. Can't touch them, but test them. Test them. Because I know what's inside of them. Because if God be for us, then who can be against us, right? I mean, we are so strong in faith that there's nothing that can be done to us. Nothing, no one can pluck us out of the hand of God. And those are truths that we need to live upon that no matter what happens to us, no matter what type of tribulation, what type of suffering that we endure, God is going to take care of us. Now, it may be until death. You may, not, you may not live it out here on this time frame, but you may suffer until death like Polycarp. But don't you know he got a reward when he saw Jesus face to face. But if you think about life here on earth compared to eternity... This is like a grain of sand compared to a beach. I mean, it is eternity in heaven. Don't get so caught up in the negativity of this life and forget about the blessings that are to come. Don't take your focus off of heaven because something so bad is happening right now, right here. You stay faithful to God. You 
keep your faith in God. You keep your faith in your spouse. You keep your faith in your job. Don't give up. You stay strong and God will take care of it. God will take care of you. God will take care of that evil boss. God will take care of that evil neighbor. God will take care of them. Why? Because God says, vengeance is mine. And we don't need to be the judge. We don't need to be casting vengeance on somebody. We say, God, I'm just living for you. So no matter what happens, I, I'm yours. I belong to you. Can you say that today? That you belong to God and you're 100% faithful. You're 100% committed. That's what he's looking for. That's what Joshua was urging for. That's what we are to do in our relationship with the Lord. Verse 34, then he said, Peter, uh, then, then the Lord said to, to Peter, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you deny me three times and that, that you know me. Folks, we are tested in our faith every day, and I'm going to say most of the time, all day. When you're alive, when you're breathing, your faith is going to be tested. Are you going to stand boldly? Are you going to stand strong? Or are you going to be caving in? And I'm, gonna, I'm here as a messenger of God to warn you and to instruct you and to encourage you. Be faithful. Be faithful in your marriage. Be faithful to your friends. Be faithful to your church. Now, I know every once in a while, you know, you, you, you have to go do something or, you know, you, you miss church or, or, or whatever. But listen, are, are you committed to your church wholeheartedly? Do you give to your church, not just money, but your time and your talents? Do, do you 100% serve the Lord in that capacity? Are you 100% faithful in your marriage? If not, men, women, I'm going to say this, you better be. You better be. You better be faithful because God uses the framework of marriage as an illustration of our relationship with Him. Jesus is the groom and the church. We as Christians, we're the bride. And that is the marriage. And God is going to be so faithful to us. And in return, we are to be faithful to Him. Let's remember His faithfulness. Let's remember the rewards that we're going to gain because we are going to remain faithful. Do you choose faithfulness today? Do you choose to be faithful? I'm going to ask you to stand. The girls are going to come get a song. Are you faithful? Could that be said of you today? Could God say that about you? Because that's the ultimate judge. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. Could God look at you right in the eyes today and say, you're my servant. I'm well pleased with you. If not, what did Paul say in 2 Timothy chapter 2? If we are faithless, he is faithful. So when you don't think that you're faithful, you just turn back to God and He will make you what you need to be. That's a decision that you have to make in your life. I hope the first decision that you've made is, I trust Jesus. I trust Him with my life. I surrender my all to Him in a relationship. I confess my sins. I follow Him. I repent. He is my Lord. He is my Master. Right there. You're sealed with salvation, with the salvation of God. But then it's up to you, the choices that you make in your life. Are you going to choose to be faithful? Are you going to choose to be faithful in all these situations in your life? It's your choice. Father, we just pray today that you have encouraged us by your word. I pray, God, that you have put the power of your word inside of our souls that, God, we will stand strong and boldly and to confess you to anyone and everyone that you are our Lord, that we belong to you, and, Lord, that we are yours. So, God, I pray in these next few minutes, if there's a person here, young, middle-aged, old, it doesn't matter, if they have not fully 100% committed their life to you, God, I pray that they do so before they leave. Lord, even right now, they just confess, Lord, I want to be 100% your servant. Use me today, God. You can count on 
me. I will be your servant. You will be my master. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to make a choice right now. We make it on this day because we know what's coming. There's suffering, there's persecution, there's tribulation, but there's also blessings that are coming. And we're going to stand strong for you. We're making our decisions today to say, I will be faithful to death. So, Father, thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to be standing right down here. We're going to have this time of invitation. If you need to come, Leo's going to be up here as well. If you uh, need special prayer in your life, you're going through something, he's right here. He's going to be available to pray with you. I'm going to ask Miss Suzanne if you'll come down here as well. Um, just, just having a, a woman right here. If a, a, another woman needs to just pray with a woman, I want you to feel comfortable right now because this is a house of prayer. This is where we come to to lay our burdens at the feet of Jesus and we surrender our whole life to Him. So we're going to sing and you come. Speed.